Hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Let There Be Talk. This is Friday, February 3rd, and the episode is brought to you by my great sponsor, El Cajon Harley. I'm down here in San Diego right now. I'm going to stop by El Cajon Harley today. Go in and see him. Ask for my boy, Greg Riley. He'll do you right, man. They got all kinds of great great bikes on the floor man they got the new milwaukee eight baggers they've got the dyna s they've got the breakout they've got some screaming eagles on the floor some cvo bikes and stop in there super bowl sunday go hey give me some super bowl love get yourself a a touchdown a touchdown motorcycle yeah (laughs) go see him greg riley and the boys at el cajon harley also tonight if you are in San Diego, Elko and Harley and myself are doing a special show at the La Jolla Comedy Store, 9.30 tonight, Friday night. It's biker night, so we'll see you at the El Cajon uh, biker night at the uh, La Jolla Comedy Store. All right. We're, uh, I'm here with my guest. Introduce yourself. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Suli McCullough, a.k.a. Crazy Legs from Don't Be a Menace. <laughs> yeah, I got a dream. Back again. That's we're, right. I'm back. We did it before, yeah. but now we're doing it from La Jolla. Yeah, we're live in La Jolla, and it's like a bitchin' episode. Spicer's not here, so I got you. And, right. Uh, and uh, it's your first time doing La Jolla. It, it is my first time doing the La Jolla Comedy Store. I've heard nothing but good things. Uh, this is like really... like. You know what's funny? Like, this feels like one of those places that, you know, white people don't want black people to know about. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not I'm not trying to make it a racial thing. Yeah. But white people have a way of finding all the good shit. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's uh, beaches. Yep. There's uh, places to eat. We're on the And beach. walk. Yeah. And uh, just be, you know, comfortable with yourself. Yep. Uh, you can get a bike and, and bike and stuff. Yeah, we got uh, two bikes here. I saw a hot girl running, Yep. Uh, clearly getting her exercise, and she started talking to a dude with a skateboard. Yeah. And I was like, damn, I got to get a skateboard. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because she clearly dropped the running yeah. and was like, all right, I'm going to let this skateboard dude mac me. She was like, is that Spicoli from Fast Times? And he yeah, had right? a kind of Spicoli vibe about yeah. him. Everybody down here Yeah, does. everyone does. Like, yeah. that's that's the move. Yeah, man. It's funny. Um, you've been doing comedy. How long have you been doing it? 20 years or so? Uh, yeah, I'm in, the, I'm in the 20 plus year club. Yeah, so. Uh, and I've never done La Jolla. It's like, unbelievable. Like, I feel like. I actually feel like I'm I'm gifted something. You yeah. know what I mean? It was yeah, like you oh, owe me. Yeah, owe me. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's cool because uh, it's my birthday today, and happy uh, birthday, man! Thank, thank you, buddy. Yeah, that's awesome. And last year, I had this massive uh, party. I, I turned fifty. Right, that's I, a big one. Yeah, so I had the Delray at the El Rey, and Burr and I and Rogue, and we all we played ACDC, and we did all kinds of stuff. Right. And I was thinking, man, I kind of want to do that again. And then a little bit of me in the back of my head was like, man, I'm just turning 51. It's not a big deal. Like, it it felt forced. Like, yeah, I I should do that again. And it's like, it's never going to live up to that legendary night, man. Yeah, sometimes you like, you got to let those big things just be. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, the 50 is a, it's it's a milestone. It really is. You know what I mean? So. You do have to blow it out by nature. Well, especially if you're young like me and you burned it up so hard and that rock and roll thing, you know, hope right. I die before I right. get old. Right, right, right. And, you know, it really is that ride it till the wheels fall off. And then all of a sudden there's somewhere along the line where you go, oh, I kind of want to live. Yeah. You start to yeah. enjoy life on the back end and you go like, oh, yeah. You know? Well, let me ask you this. Like turning 50, uh, did you stress out at all? Did you get anxiety? Did you uh, start to like soul I got search? diabetes. Well, That's perfect. What, got. <laughs> what a great gift. Yeah. What a <laughs> It's the gift birthday. that keeps keeps on giving, really. Yeah, right? It was, it was so <laughs> funny, man. I was, I was thinking like, I'll know exactly when I got diabetes because I was 50, you know? Right, I mean? right. But- um. I, you know, what I start to think about, and I was talking to somebody about it yesterday, a friend of mine, you start to realize, and I, 
and and I like to speak in real terms because you and I, the last time we were on, Gary Shanling had just passed. Yeah, and you and I were talking on the way here. Um, as 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 far as we are in 2017, I truly believe that people live way less now. Like you, I thought it would be by now. We would live to be 130 if we if we choose to. Sure. Like, sure. okay, you go here and you start eating this pill and you can live as long as you want. Right. I mean, not like science fiction. I'm not dumb or yeah, whatever. Yeah, but what, what you're saying is, is technology is advanced in right. ways to preserve ourselves. Yeah, and it's just proof that, you know, I mean, like I always say, my grandmother lived to be 100. Uh, she smoked and drank every day. You right, know what I mean? right. And... Um, and 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 everybody seemed to live to be 80s and 90s right and now as um as as i sit here i go well you know i'm 51 i i really hope i make it to like 60 uh Let's just say, and, and people always say the same thing. Oh man, you'll make that. Yeah, yeah, they take it for granted. Nobody has no idea. Yeah, man. you don't. Yeah, they, you don't know. Bombs. You don't know, man. Brain aneurysm, yeah. heart attack, uh, some cancer, and 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 it all comes down to the last. I really feel like the last twenty years when the food really changed. I remember when I went into McDonald's one day and I go, "I'm never eating here again. This does not taste like the fucking quarter pounder right. when I was growing right. up. There's right. no meat in this." Right. As soon as I saw pink swill, I go, "Oh well, we're all dying." Yeah. Right. Sister. Right. And it, it's you could get into the conspiracy stuff of like it's government. Yeah. They, they're, they're just weeding out population. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. Get into some chemtrails and all sure. that. But the bottom line is. Nobody's really living a long time anymore. Right. Right. You know, like, do you think about it? Like, well, I mean, absolutely. Cent? Like, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm 49, so my 50 is coming next year. Uh-huh. Uh, and, you know, I mean, I'm still processing losing Gary. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was with him two days before he died. Yeah. Uh, we were writing together, and, um, you know, uh, he he you know he he said to me hey let's go for a hike and you know the one thing that i will say is i was always present with gary and i knew that our time together was special yeah you know what i mean like he was such a grounded gifted like people throw around the word genius uh, like pretty loosely these yep. days but he was a genius in ways that it's really rare when people come into your life and affect you in multiple ways yeah, absolutely. and they make you like a better person and the conversations that you have stick with you long after, you know, totally. th they've happened. Like he was that kind of guy. Like he really was, you know, one of the most grounded, spiritual, inspiring, you know, hilarious, you know, it, it I almost don't have the words to yeah. describe the levels of our friendship. Yeah, I and, was saying that too about like guys when you meet certain people, you go, well, they have it. It's yeah, like, yeah. Like Bill Paxton but, was on last week, and he really has something about him, this aura. And you, right, he right. He draws you in, and you're right. like, this guy's like a time traveler, right, man. He's, right. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, you know, like like there, you know, there's just so many things that that I I process and take from that friendship and. You know, like our, our last time seeing each other, you know, we were writing, you know, we were working on stand up and, uh, you know, after we finished writing for the day, he said, hey, let's go for a hike. And, you know, I knew if, if somebody offers you something like somebody told me a long time ago, they go, if, if somebody ever really listen to what people are saying, because yeah. they're. They're, they're saying things to you for a reason. They're reaching out. Yeah, they're reaching out yep. for a reason. They're trying to connect for a reason. There's a purpose behind it. And so he, you know, he said, hey, let's go for a hike. And I was like, yeah, okay, cool. So we jumped in my car and uh, we drove up the hill. He lived in Brentwood. And we started hiking. And we started talking about some things that he was dealing with. And he had just given me this book called The Way of the Superior Man. And, you know... I instantly was jumping into it and reading it when he gave it to me. And so it gave us a chance to talk about right. the book. And I was like, man, I really appreciate you recommending that to me. I'm getting so much out of it. And we really had this, um, 
very connected conversation about, you know, shit that matters. Yeah, yeah. And um, so when he when he passed away two days later, we were supposed to write two days later, and I felt like while it was hard to process, I felt like our friendship had a honest resolution. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Absolutely, and man. and that that, that hike, hike. Yeah, that hike yeah. that we took was our chance to 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 say goodbye, you know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. to to put it in a place where we could process it. And um you know, it's it it's it's like some of the things that he said they they've stuck with me and they they motivate every decision that I make moving forward yeah absolutely you know you know what i mean like uh you know without without getting too introspective about it you know he was he was a a transcendent person yeah you know what i mean like in so many different ways like he would always you know i I think about him when i go up go on stage all the time right you know what i mean working at the comedy store i feel like it's an extension of the things that we talked about like you know we had really deep conversations about um what it was like when he was in the clubs, when he was at the comedy yeah. store, and Robin Williams was there, and Richard Pryor was there, uh, you know, and and uh, all the guys that are the the legends of the game, yeah, you absolutely. know, when Letterman was there, uh, when Seinfeld was there, and you know, him trying to fit in and feeling the the challenges of you know making your way. And and, and 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 making you know what I mean, like yep. those kind of things that you know. When I go on stage, when I step into a club, I think about these conversations that we had. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, Absolutely. are you bringing your real life on stage with you? Are you taking risks? Are you pushing yourself? Are you doing your work? Um, you know, he was he was a mentor, man. He was like a real spiritually grounded mentor, and it wasn't. You know, I've I've wrote for a lot of different comics that are phenomenal comics yeah uh gary was really on another level man he was really on another level were you writing bits for him yeah well you know we were um you know i was really fortunate you know before he he passed away he um he called me and he had asked me to help him Get ready for comedians and cars oh, with gotcha. Jerry Seinfeld. Oh, yeah. And I remember that. Yeah. And and, uh, and I was just I was really honored, man. I was like, whoa, this dude wants me to help him get ready to do this. That's and cool. So, you know, I I watched a lot of episodes of the show and I watched a lot Found of comics that I like and I saw what the rhythm was and I broke it down and um and and we set out, you know, just sort of writing this these jokes together. Yeah, that's and, right. And um yeah, it was it was great, man, and and you know to think that you know aside from the documentary that I did that he's in, you know that was the last real thing that people saw. Yeah, that was uh, right then, man. Yeah, it was right then, and we talked about you know in, in comedians and cars he talks about death a lot. I know, and, you That's know what, what I mean? Was really like crazy, yeah. it, you know, like like I will say this about Gary, um, he uh, was very very. Um, in tune with where he was in life, right? You you know what I mean? Yep. And and and, and what his journey was about. Yeah. You yeah. know, like we all we would often talk about like staying on path, and you know, because he was further along in his journey, he really imparted a lot of wisdom on me. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I and feel he, that, man. You and know? and uh, you know, he would say things like. You know, people will come into your life to help you stay on your path, and people will come in your life to try and take you off your path. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you have to stay committed to knowing what your path is. Right. You, you know what I mean? I and do, yeah. and and that's what stand up is. Like a lot of people don't realize that. Like I feel that that you know it is a calling. You Absolutely, know what I mean? Yeah. And and you yeah. can't. You know, you can't fake this at all. No, man. You know I, what I mean? Like, even when I got up, like, I, I talk about it a lot. Like, um, you know, I played music all my life, and then I stop, and I'm, I'm, I'm selling motorcycles in a corner of Van Nuys, California. And then next thing you know, uh, I get pushed back onto the path by doing a movie, then meeting comedians and starting comedy. Right. It's almost like some, like... 
whatever had to line up for me to for, to get in a movie, like right. back in, right. like on stage. You right. know what I mean? To me, that's more than a coincidence. Sure. That's like, hey, you're supposed to be back on stage. Right. And I really feel that. Right. Because if, if not, you would have to look at everything that went down to line up. That's almost impossible. Like sure. Like I stop music sure. and then I, I decide... Oh, I'm gonna work at this Harley dealer in the middle of nowhere, and then next thing you know, uh, you know, I'm doing movies because I was working there. You know what I right, mean? It's just right. insane. And then I meet, you know, Earthquake. Right. That, all those things. Right. Have well, to- I, 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 I thoroughly believe there are no accidents. Me either. You know what I, I mean? I like I've too. always felt that way. Yeah. You know, um, I have this documentary coming out. Uh, on February 24th called yeah. Dying Laughing. And it's, you know, a high art movie about stand-up. Yeah, and let's, get, let's talk about that. How Now, what was the idea of it? it it's, well, I, I'll tell you the process. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, you know, there, there are no accidents. Like, yep. I uh, was with this agency, um, and the agency ended up dropping me. Yeah. And uh, it hit me hard, dude. After all you know? these years, yeah. Like, after all these years of doing stand up, you, do you know, and, I've done movies. Yeah. Uh, I was on the Jamie Foxx show. Uh, you know, I was a working writer, producer. Worked on the you Tonight know, Show. I, I, I wrote on the Tonight Show. On, uh, uh, I wrote on Lopez Tonight. Uh, I wrote on the ESPY Awards for six years. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize that, but I do a lot of writing and producing for a lot of people. I produced Cedric the Entertainer special. Right. Um, you know, I wrote for Jamie Foxx uh, on Saturday Night Live. You know, like, you know, I, I really uh, was able to um, do a lot of different things. You know, I'm fortunate in that way. You right. know what I mean? Uh, but I went through a, a down period. And, you know, I ended up getting dropped by my agents and they were very uh, callous about it. You know what I mean? Like they weren't pulling no punches. You know what I mean? Like this business is, you know, a lot of people. It's like Marin. The guy calls him and goes, "Ah, no one wants to book you anymore. Back in the, you know. like Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll tell you this, dude, what what they said to me. They said, uh, yeah, it's a really tough business and uh, yeah, it's just not working out. Wow. And uh, it was like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was like, you know, I, I, I was bringing them, you know, projects that uh, were original ideas that, you know, I recruited talent for and went out and collaborated and shot and, you know, like, hey, let's try and shop this. I feel it's good. Yeah. So it wasn't like I was sort of sitting around and right. just waiting You're not for that guy going like, hey, no, you, my you know, that's that you, you can't do that in this business. No, you know all. what I mean? Like, uh, th- you know, to be a comic is to is to hustle. Absolutely. You have to hustle for yeah. yours. Totally. You know what I mean? If you think it's just going to come to you, it's not. Yeah. And the people that it just comes, does come to, they burn out real It goes quick. away. Uh, it goes yeah, away. Big time. And then they, you see them working at like, you know, Blockbuster or whatever. Sure. Sure. I mean, I can't like, tell you in the 20 plus years I've been doing this, how many people that were the hot, you know, thing that aren't doing it anymore. Right. You know what I mean? Like, there's no guarantees about this. And so when I got that information, it hit me really hard, you know, because I was still grinding in the clubs. I, you know, was still, you know, doing things. But in the eyes of that side of the business... Yeah, not bringing in income. I'm not bringing in income. The kind that they're looking for. Yeah, that they're looking for. Like, uh, you know, and, and, you know, I'll say this about agents. Agents really are... They want it easy. You know what I mean? They're oh, going to see what sticks to the wall. I, I see and, it every day. And, and they want it easy. You know what I mean? I, I see it every day because it's like, here I am, you know, working my ass off. Do, I did movies, uh, you know, TV. Uh, I'm touring and everything. And and then they'll just grab a guy who's been doing it like two years that looks good. Right. And because they're hoping to just get him on TV. Well, you know what it is? Checks. It's like a, 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 a young talent. It's almost like the NBA when they were drafting dudes out of high school. Yeah. You know what I mean? Versus these college seniors that had put four years in and were polished and probably a more developed 
player, player yep. but they were going with the potential of what this other player could be. Yeah, they're just That's the business. The, they're looking it, for the quick money. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's like, oh, he's got a great look, or she's got a great we'll look. Get right or, we'll a, get him right a in. We'll get him right in. CBS. Exactly. And I can get the new beam. I, it's so funny because I went to a movie premiere recently, and uh, there were some agents in the parking garage. And, you know, I was looking at their watches and their cars and their shoes, you know, and I was like, they want to keep that lifestyle. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. They and it's more about those developing those pre existing relationships. Yeah. You know exactly. what I mean? Like, yeah. LA is a front running town. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. they want championships yesterday. Yeah. And they want winners yesterday. Yeah. But winners sometimes have to go through a process of evolution. There's no Well, you got to lose talent. to win. No, they want completely contained yep. finished products. Yep. You know what I mean? And if you're not that, <laughs> like, they don't have time for they anything go else. Out, do all the work. And then as soon as you hit, We'll sign you. Right. <laughs> so um, after I got dropped, you know, it hit me really hard. Um, I got a phone call the next day from a friend of mine, and they said, oh, my friends uh, are making this movie about stand-up. You should be in it, and in fact, you guys should work together. Yeah. And uh, I remember listening to the call, and I, and I, like, my, uh, uh, like my initial thought was, I'm not big enough to be in this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I was thinking like the agents yep. where I was selling myself short. Right. But, you know, I also was in a place where I was like, oh, I have to prove that I have value in this business. So I took the phone call and I, you know, talked to this director, Paul Toogood, and he had done a movie called From Nothing to Something, The Art of Rap. And right. I really liked that movie because his approach to what um, the rap game was, like he humanized the rappers. He didn't one, one dimensionalize them at all. Right. You know what I mean? Like he really presented them as artists. That's cool. And what I liked about that, I was like, oh, this dude gets it. And so we talked and he said, you know, I want to make this movie about stand-ups and, uh, Was you know, he a stand-up stand fan? No, he, he's a fan of stand-up, yeah, but he's not a stand-up. He right. comes from the music business and was a manager in the music business. So he worked with some really big acts like Led Zeppelin. Wow. And, you know what I mean? So he was very connected in he that side. He worked with Zeppelin? Yeah. What's and, his name? Uh, Paul Toogood. Wow. And, um, and so... It was cool, like, you know, the, off this first conversation, I was like, you know what? I'm going to take this journey. And what was the original idea of the documentary? Well, the original idea of the documentary, and I'm glad you asked that, was we originally were going to focus on bombing stories. Bombing comics' stories. worst nights on right, stage. Right. That was going to be the entire documentary. And so when we sat the talent in the chair, we instantly, like, I did the first interview in the documentary. Right. And... Uh, after that first interview, we, we, and this is to the credit of, of everyone involved, we realized, oh, there's a bigger story here. Yeah. To just do a movie about bombing is short selling what being a stand up is. Yeah. Because you so, need to know about killing. Right. To know but about not bombing. just that, you know, what it takes to be a stand up. You deal with loneliness, you yeah. deal with isolation, you deal with going on the road. Like, um, you know, a lot of times when you're on the road, you know, the it's comic not this. is, it's, it's not, not this, beach. it's not, it's not <laughs> La Jolla. Right yeah, now. we're on the beach right now. We're, we're We've got the, yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, you're working with somebody that's like minded. It's normally not like this. No. You know what I mean? So, you know, and everyone that was in our documentary is talking about, what it takes to do this. And so that was interesting. That's amazing. Um, and let's yeah. talk about who's on it. Well, I mean, you know, we, we, we really have an embarrassment of riches. Like, yeah. it is the best of the best. Um, Jerry Seinfeld's in the documentary. Uh, Chris Rock is in the documentary. Uh, Sarah Silverman's in the documentary. Uh, Amy Schumer's in the documentary. Um, uh, Gary Shandling's in the documentary. Uh, Jamie Foxx. Yeah. Uh, Steve Coogan. Uh, the list goes on. We now, we, was... we interviewed 109 stand-ups wow. here and overseas, and 30 made the final film. Did you find 
they all had similar stories of the process? Absolutely. Well, the, the coolest thing about making this this documentary, and it's... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, did, did I say Jerry Lewis? Oh, no. Jerry no. Lewis is in the documentary, mm. which is, you know... Wow. Uh, which is Which is, yeah, I mean, it's... it's <laughs> he started stand-up. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Like, when I was a kid and I watched Nutty Professor, yeah. never in my life did I think I would produce something that Jerry Lewis was in. So, I mean, like... You know, it's really interesting when you go and you make something from the heart and it's very close to your passion where that leads you. You yeah. know what I mean? And who comes into the fold. Um Yeah, I mean it 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 was uh it was it was a uh, it was transcendent. So the store what what did you see the common thread was? Well, I mean, I Depression. think the common thread you know, I mean, it, well, it varies. Like, we explore depression, but not everybody's depressed. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, Chris Rock makes some really great points about, you know, depression. Uh, and I don't want to give it away because of I course. do want people to see the movie. But it, we, we explore it, and, and some comics have different takes. Like, I think it is a factor. Um You know, you, you definitely go through ups and downs. Um You have to process what being the center of attention and having, you know, the focus on you at shows and then you walk off stage and you have to deal with yourself. Yeah. You know, a lot of people aren't good about processing that. Right. You know, there's a lot of demons that you have to deal with when you choose this lifestyle. You know what I mean? There's there's heavy costs that you have to pay. We do explore that in the film. What I like about it is um, it's it's a highbrow comedy movie you know what i mean it's a comedy movie about our craft yeah yeah uh and it's serious in tone but it's also really funny and very honest yeah yeah one of the things that was really cool about this is if we tried to make it through like a comedy central or a, a hbo um there would be certain expectations you know we had independent investors which gave us the freedom to make this from the most real place that's awesome uh we never had more than I'd say eight people on set. Wow. And the director interviewed the talent. Um, and so there was a real simplicity to having a real conversation. Like, much like you and I are having now, you know, we just happen to be doing this with this documentary on camera and making it for the theater. How... How long were the interviews? Were they a day, or um, two days? The interviews would last uh, about an hour oh, on average, gotcha. and some went up to two hours. Wow! And we really explored. You know, the film is about the process. Yeah, and everyone in it is talking about it. What? Stand up is it how they write uh, and stuff like that? I mean, we got into that stuff, yeah, but you know, technique can be boring a little bit, I get you know you. what I mean? I like, get you. you know, if you are a true comedy nerd, like most comics are, yeah, uh, technique is fascinating, yeah, but to the average person, they just want to laugh, yeah, yeah, you, you know right. what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. I think we found a really good balance where it's entertaining but also informative. Um, We've, we've only screened it one time. We, we wow. premiered it at the L.A. Film Festival, and that was our first time screening it in front of a large audience. And people loved it? Uh, the response was overwhelmingly positive, dude. Really? Like, it really, you know, it, it was interesting. Like, you know, I'd seen the film twice before that. Uh, I saw it in an edit bay, and then we also screened it for Gary Shandling, which was um, kind of the stamp of approval. We screened it for him in his house, yeah. and you know he he dug it. He really liked it, and that meant the world to us that made it because it was like you know we were getting the 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 gold seal. Yeah, yeah, you absolutely. know what I mean. Absolutely. And so at the LA Film Festival, that was the first time it played on a big screen uh, in front of an audience, and yeah, people dug it, man. They really liked it, and what they liked about it was it uh, aside from telling the truth about stand-up is it speaks to the truth about believing in your dreams and uh what it takes to commit to your craft yeah which yeah. is is dope and it's universal yeah you yeah. know what i mean yeah like, for whatever your job is yeah life, exactly you know? i mean if you're a musician i think you'll get something out of this if you are a uh, artist of any sort if you're just somebody that wants to do good work i think you'll get something out of this yeah 
Yeah, that's interesting. Now, what's it coming out on? Uh, it's coming out in uh, in select theaters. Uh, we're doing a limited release in theaters, and I would recommend that's the way you see it. That's because how I we, see it. We Sunset made it for yeah, 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 one of those kind of play. Like right. we made it for the big screen, and when you see these comics, you know, thirty feet in the air, uh, it's you know these are the world's greatest talkers, man. Yeah, and you know they're talking about things that they care about and what their journey has been, and that's the way to see it. So you can see it in theaters, but you know we also live in a time where if you can't go to it. Yeah. It can come to you, so uh, you can you can pre-order it on iTunes. Oh, bitchin'. Uh, so video on demand and watch it in your house. Um, yeah, give them the name of it again. Uh, it's called Dying Laughing. And, uh, there's there, a trailer There's out, a right? trailer out right now. Is as it on a, YouTube? It's on uh, YouTube, and you can also find it on iTunes. Uh, you know, we've gotten really good reviews. Uh, the Hollywood Reporter really liked the film. That's bad. Uh, Entertainment Weekly. Uh, you know, there'll be more reviews and, and, uh, it'll be out there more as, as it gets closer to the release. But yeah, you can go on YouTube right now, type in dying laughing documentary, watch the trailer, uh, and then, you know, see for yourself. That's so cool. You know, what was cool about the film too was, uh, we made a conscious decision not to use archival footage. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I, I think archival footage is cool cause it's cool to see people's journey and where they come from and, you know, uh, your favorite comics dressed in these weird outfits. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and this the grainy footage. Era. Yeah, exactly. The or, era. Yeah, or the, the, uh, the bolo era. Yeah, the Do you bolo. remember that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Bill Hicks wore a bolo. Yeah, yeah. right, right. So, yeah, you know, like, era. you know, like that's a, that's a cool thing to see. But we also knew that, you know, stand ups get on stage and they talk for a living. Yeah. So, you know, having. A great talker talk is enough. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah, we yeah, uh, we also did some really cool things where we sent our cinematographer um, to drive across country. Like when you go on the road and you first start out and you get in your car and you drive from gig to gig. Get some B-real so, yes, footage Yes, exactly. Of that. So, so you feel movement. Yes, exactly. That's cool. And that's, you know, that breaks up the, you know, the, the talking heads. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's real in that way. You know what I mean? Like that's really what being on the road is and driving across the, and, you know, driving for miles and you only have yourself. And, yeah. you know, so... I think people are really gonna gonna dig this movie. Yeah, that's interesting. That that style of comedy, like uh, you know, in the old days, not even the old days, but even maybe ten, fifteen years ago, uh, comics really booked dates and then got in a car and just drove them. You right, know? right. And I did that with uh, Red Band like a year ago. We booked like four dates in Middle America, it was like Columbus, Ohio, and. Uh, Pittsburgh and I don't know, uh, uh, Dr. Grins, where's that at? I, I don't yeah, even know. Another place. That Dr. sounds like, yeah, that's someplace yeah. I've never been. So the, and then, and then, um, and then Indianapolis, but we got a rental car. We flew in and then got a rental car and just right. drove the spots. Right. And, um, I thought about like, man, this is old school. Man. Yeah. We're just out yeah. here and, and you know, if you bomb at one spot, it's a long car ride to the next Right. And spot. you got to think about it yeah. and feel it. And your and buddy's yeah. right next to you and he knows yeah. you bombed. Yeah. And so you kind of don't want to talk about it. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. That was a bomb city back then. Right, <laughs> right, right. It's and the good thing is, is you can drive out. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you're booked at a club for a week, and you bomb. Oh, you're there. Again. You're there, and oh you got to go God. right back yeah. to it and confront yeah. it. Yeah. At least if you are booked in one of those like road gigs like that, it's like you can drive and drive fast. Yeah, to the next yeah. hotel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's 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 uh, it's funny, man. It's uh, there's so I'm I'm learning balance too right now. Like I, I know. Um, like I, I've been pounding it in LA and New York a lot, and I was like, "Yeah, that's that's the ultimate way to do comedy, just LA, New York." Sure, you know what I mean. Sure. But then I realized you need to get out and run hours mm -hmm. because now we're in a, an age of comedy where 
It used to be you worked out in the comedy store, you worked out in New York, but now it's all heavy hitters. There's tons of agents in there right. and stuff. So if you're working out, they're like, I saw that guy once. He was terrible. Right. Well, so yeah, I the think, road I think is in you LA, the margin for failure is so minimal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yep. you've got you know, everyone's attention for a split second yeah. and you have to hold it. Minutes. Like, it's like, you know, it, it's really interesting. Um, you know, comedy in LA and New York, it's like boxing gyms. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you got to come in punching. Yep. You know what I mean? Like you, you really don't you're fight in one round. Yeah. You're not, you're... you know, you might be sparring. Yeah. But you're throwing real punches. Mm -hmm. You're not just, you know, you're not walking through it. Not at all. You know what I mean? Like, and, and, you know, nowadays, I, you know, I think, you know, the comedy store is really kind of the A club in Los Angeles now. Yep. And you look at the lineups and it's all hitters. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, even guys hanging out that aren't going up. Yep. They're are strong. Hitters. They're yeah, hitters. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So it's funny because it, I look at it like, you know, uh, it used to be you worked out at the store to get your set great to go on the road. Right. And now you go on the road to get your set great Where you can, for the store. Yeah, so when you come in the store, they you're like, you're ready to go. They go, whoa, that guy's killer. Yeah, yeah. Where's yeah. he been working that yeah, shit? It's, yeah. it's the opposite now. Right, it's hilarious. Right. It's almost like you're on the road and you're like, hey, people, you're going to see me practice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, I, I've, I've always felt like the road is the perfect place to take risks. Um, you know, um, you, you do want to, I, I always believe that you do have the expectation to give them a good show. Of course. But you also, stage time is so valuable. Yeah. And if you get more on the road, you need to use it. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? You need to, you need to, you need to immediately realize, map out the set, kick some ass at the top. Switch into new stuff for right. a while. If you start to right. lose them, go back into go some back to gold. killer mode. Yeah, and it's just a it's a ping pong back and right. forth. Some new stuff, right? Okay, and sometimes the new stuff will start killing. You're like, all right, now I'll go into yep. the uh, yep. the, the stuff that works. Stuff. Yeah, holy shit, now I'm really killing you. Know? Right, or I'm eating a dick here. I better bring out the A material. Right, right. So it's it's an unbelievable game of uh, ping pong, you know, with you and the audience. Right. And uh, and and right now, in more than ever in the last few weeks, I'm like, oh, I got to get out and do these hours because I realized two weeks ago, I've completely even forgot stuff I was doing five months ago. Right. Because I'm not doing stuff that works 100% perfect at the store because I'm trying to get some new stuff up going. Right. And, and, you know, if I just go in there and just do the stuff, then it just dies because right. I'm just doing it over and over and over and over. So it's funny because I just hit hit a set from a year ago on iTunes and I went, God, this set's great. I'm not right. even doing any of this material. Right, right. I forgot about it. Out right. of sight, out of mind. Right. You know? So, you Well, know. you know, also, too, I think working at the A clubs, yeah, it is forces you to create new material I love because it. you see what everyone else is doing yeah. you know you get a real sense of where the bar is like i remember last year when uh, chris rock was getting ready to host the oscars yep. what was so great about the store was he was working out there and he was working out for real that was you amazing. know what i mean like it was, it was amazing really to amazing to watch yeah he... like it reminded me of seeing prior there and all of the other greats because this dude came in punching. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh, he wasn't coming in to dick no, around. No, not at all. Work. But he was working, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he was experimenting, and he was really honing that act. You know what I mean? And yeah. knew the stakes of what the Oscars were. I mean, it was really inspiring to watch. It was. Like, when I watch him, dude, like, he's, you know, I I'm such a fan of his. You know, he's, he, to see how seriously he takes his craft. Yep. Uh, and, you know, I've known Chris for a long time. Like, and when he did uh, the interview for our documentary, it was the same day as the final Letterman. Wow. And uh, so he did the interview for our documentary first and then went to Letterman. Wow. And so he came in ready to go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like he's already in a mind. Yeah. Mind yeah. And like, it was, you know, like I said, man, he's, he's, he's somebody that I really respect 
because you know his work ethic is so strong yeah and um he he doesn't phone it in no you know the times that i've seen him even getting ready for you know specials or going out on tour where he's workshopping the material in you know places where he could take it easy or you know just kind of play the hey i'm here and you know me yep. and you know the body Punching of my work stuff. he's not doing that no ever. he's not doing I've it never at all seen that I've, ever. yeah he's he's challenging the audience you know he's not backing off the material it's really really a um you know almost like a a master class in doing this the right way yeah you, yeah. you know what i mean i'm excited uh, that's, I think, one of the best things about Netflix was three of my favorite comedians, uh, Chappelle, Chris Rock, and Seinfeld, um, all signed these big deals. And I know that they're a lot to me like bands who have classic records. Out. Right. They're like, okay, we got to go out and make a new special. Right. These guys are not going to fuck around. Right. Because it's going to be like, you know, I'll show you why we signed this big deal. Yeah. You know that, I mean? that we're worth the money. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know what I love about the, the, the Netflix deals too is, you know, as much as some of these places try to define what the voice of comedy is, right? the cream always rises. You know what I mean? Totally. And, you know, as the bar gets set higher with better pieces of content whatever these other places are trying to do it doesn't matter yeah. you know what i mean like oh, you yeah. can you can sort of force someone down america's throat yep. as this is the thing and this is the move in comedy but it it it, it doesn't You're so hold right. yeah you know what i mean especially back when the old regimes had this control right we promote who we think right is yeah you know, here's yeah. the young new thing yeah. coming up yeah and it's like no yeah, no this that, ain't it that era's over now. right right now, now it really outlets, is yeah especially with podcasting yep. with uh with internet with youtube or or CISO or netflix yep. or hulu or all that you could be like you know, the guy that you didn't think was young enough or the guy you didn't think was good looking or the guy you didn't understand as comedy. It might have been too edgy. Right. Or, or whatever you were looking for, your safe, perfect home run. Uh, the people are reaching out. I mean, you know, look how great it is. Joey Diaz, you know, he puts his first special out. Uh, after doing comedy 20, 25 years. Right. And, and, and no one offered him a special. Right. And it's the biggest one on CISO. It just right. exploded. Right. right. And I love when that happens because it's two middle fingers. Sure. You know what I mean? It's sure. Like, yeah, you guys could have had this. Right. You could have had it 10 years ago. But you know what, though? Like, that's no fault of anybody other than what this game is it's yeah, like totally you know totally. there's, like no, I said, there's it, no bitterness coming out no you and know what it, it, i'm it, just saying the old days of guys that like you know like signed a zeppelin or a doors or whatever they're not like oh the the commercial value in this they're going like wow these guys are artists man. right i want to have them on my right. label as a, a bragging right of like we have the coolest bands right or we have the coolest comics that's what saturday night live was really about back mm -hmm. in the day we got the outlaws mm -hmm. we got the misfits we got the belushi we got bill right. murray man right. guy, these guys are weird as shit right and these guys are different and cool right. you know but they got a definitive move yeah you know what i mean and it isn't what you you know they're, they're, uh, that's the great thing about this business is there's always room for a, a surprise absolutely you know what i mean yeah. and that sneak attack can hit you at any time i want to be the next surprise you exactly know I mean? like, exactly holy shit, that guy started when he's 44 everybody wrote him off now right look. you know what i mean that's right that's cool that's the cool story that's what it's all about dude. it really is that's what it's all about everybody likes a uh underdog sure and if you're coming from, uh, I mean, Rocky's the, one of the best movies ever made. Right. And, you know, whenever I go on stage, I hear Rocky in my head. Like, yeah. I'm not supposed yeah. to be here. Yeah. And I worked my ass off, and now I am here. Yeah. And, uh, and now I'm in the fight. Yeah. And I love it. 
I mean, I that's all it. you can. That's all you can ask for is it a really chance is. to get in the ring. It really is. And that's let me let me punch. Let me yeah. punch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're doing the if you're working out, let him get in the ring. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's great, man. It's great. There's um, you know, comedy is so crazy right now. I guess they what is it? They uh. Not the History Channel, but... Um, well, CNN is CNN, doing a, right. a, a special, they, The History of Comedy. Yeah, I talked to the producer at the store on it, one of the producers. Really? And, you know, um, I bragged about this thing a lot so people would watch it, but they did those runs like the 70s, mm-hmm. and then they did that eight-part series of the 80s. Right. And the, and that stuff is unbelievable. Yeah? Have you seen any of it? No, not yet. Okay, well... It is some of the coolest shit. So what they do is they'll take a decade. Right. And the 70s one is my favorite. Right. And they'll have like eight topics. Right. First one is TV in the 70s. And right. it's all Norman Lear. Right. And it's a whole thing about how TV changed into gritty, dirty. You right, know, right. Uh, edgy, what's going on in life. Right. The next one was politics. Right. It's a... Uh, uh, Watergate and all of that. Mm-hmm. Then the next one was music in the right. 70s. And then the next one was like um, people. And and it, it covered the whole 70s, serial killers. Right. And it, it gave you a whole feel of what the 70s was. And then right. you got the 60s and the 80s. And these series were incredible, man. Right. Anyway, so now I talked to him because we were a little leery by the sign at the sure, store. It's sure. got Farley up there and it right. makes it look a little goofy. But he said, man, I really hope you guys like it because if you liked that 70s and everything, we were went really in depth on this you know? well that's great i'm looking forward to seeing yeah, it me too because uh it, it, and i've talked about this about a year ago and people watch that 70s and 80s stuff and it's fantastic man well that's like my favorite era of filmmaking Life, you know i always i always yeah. feel like whatever's going on in society dictates the voices of comedy totally you know what i mean and 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 the voices of art and you know the 70s produced some of the best movies to me ever because of everything that was going on yeah like i do feel like star uh, stopped after scarface is really kind of like you know right 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 walk in but you're looking at like 70 you got all the best movies godfather exactly exactly apocalypse Apocalypse now Now, right chinatown hearts of darkness Hearts of darkness you got uh of cuckoo's nest right you have uh china uh i said chinatown uh uh, all these French connections. It's right, crazy. Right, right. The amount dog of day art afternoon. Was, yeah, yeah dog, like yeah. everything in that era, like even comedically, uh, take the money and run is yeah. during that time. Like there's some real silver streak. Yep. Yep. All that stuff. And, and, you know, it was really edgy stuff. It's weird how we feel like we've really gone backwards because the seventies was so edgy, man. Well, you know, what's difficult is now you know, the films are these big, uh, you know, kind of, you know, Marvel films yeah. or, you know, animated projects. And so it's harder for independent voices to get anything in the marketplace. Yeah, it's strange. You know what I mean? Like, strange. And it, it's really difficult. Like, it's weird because when you see a movie like Moonlight, there's always a Moonlight style film every year or so that I just fall in love with. Right. And you'd think that the studios, you know, they're just all geared around that just slam dunk. That giant tent that pole big, thing. Big yeah. Money. But really, man, these movies are made, and I was just reading about how Netflix is going to start having original movies on. And well, I think it's great. It's going to be great because we're going to start getting some stuff like Drugstore Cowboy right, again, right. and and Trees Lounge and, right. and all these great indie films, uh, My Own Private Idaho right, and, and right. Dogfight and right. all these great films that I've seen all my life in the indie movie houses that have slowly faded away. Right. You know? Well, it's, it's very hard to uh, find an audience. Oh, yep. You know what I mean? Like... How many times have you been watching Netflix and you come across something and you're like, how come the world doesn't know more about this? It's unbelievable. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, yeah. it, it's, I think, what makes Netflix so great. Yeah, Like it's a too. chance to just sort of discover, you know, these, these hidden gems. Absolutely. I mean, Moonlight is going to win all kinds of stuff at the Academy Awards. And as I watched that film, I was like, 
oh, well, this one, you know, give them all the awards. Right. You know what I mean? Right. I always feel like, you know, and even I haven't seen La La Land, but even I want to see it this week and I need to see uh, Hidden Figures, Fences, and La La Land. Yeah. And I want to see those, but I love that La La Land was made because it's a musical. Yeah. And, and that immediately, you would think the studios would go, no. Yeah, no way. No, nah, this yeah, ain't no the way. 50s. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Last one that was great was uh, Grease. Right. You know, right, you know, right, 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 right. Or, or even the ones later on that right. did like, uh, what was that one about the... Oh, I forgot that the Weinsteins put out. It was huge. But, you know, it seems like a musical comes every 15 years and it's a right. slam dunk. Right. You know? Right. But it's if like did, the American population can only take one every 15 it's years. It's true because they're like, I'll go see that old timey stuff. Right. <laughs> right. Right. I, I need to feel happy and dance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny. I haven't seen La La Land and there's I feel weird about watching it by myself. Right. Like, Let's go um, see it. Okay, I'll do that. Because it's playing at Sunset Five, and they got the two dollar, the six dollar Tuesday. All right, I'll do that. Yeah, and you I'll, know what's funny is like I, I don't even know why that is that I can't see it by myself. Yeah, but I, you know, if I end up liking it, I don't want to just be happy that happy by myself. Yeah, that yeah. feels weird. You're all skipping out. Yeah, exactly. Fred Astaire style. Exactly. You're walking <laughs> on chairs. <laughs> It's funny because if you think about it, Saturday Night Fever, one of my favorite movies ever, is a musical. Yeah, but it's gritty, though. Oh, no, it's gritty as fuck. Yeah, it's gritty. Yeah, it's gritty. And, and That's why it is, works. Grease is gritty, too. Right, you know right. What I mean? You got the, you got the, the bad bad kids and yeah. the drag racing yeah. and all that. Yeah. But boy, is Saturday Night Fever a masterpiece. Yeah, know? it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Moulin Rouge. That was the. Uh, that, that's also. Oh yeah. That was yeah. a huge one. And then Chicago. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Once every fifteen years, yeah, you get yeah. one. Exactly. That's hilarious. I'm looking forward to who's hosting the Academy Awards this year. How? They, they should like Chris Rock do it every year. Uh, he was awesome. Oh, he just kills. Yeah. It. I. You know what? I don't even know who's hosting. I don't this either. Year. And I. I kind of don't care. Oh, I'm one of those guys that loves the Academy Awards. It's really so weird. Well, just because I always root for the like Moonlight. Yeah, like, sure. You on. want the you want the underdog to win. I'm, I'm pretty stunned that the mom and in, in Moonlight's not winning everything. Right. Uh like it's just got to be one of those years where it's got to go to somebody, you know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Those those uh uh, what are they called? The makeup award. Yeah, exactly. It's like Sean Penn exactly. killed it in this one thing. Right. In Walking Dead. Right. Uh, 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 Dead Man Walking. I right, mean, right. He kills it in that. They don't get an award for it. Then five years later, they give him one. Yeah. You know, it's like a Or makeup. like Denzel's the classic example. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he crushed it for years. Yeah. And he, then he got it for training day. This guy, Denzel, man, who's up for fences. Yeah. Um, who, this, which he directed. This guy, yeah, and it was a play. Yeah. This guy is like, I, I still feel 100% of underrated. Oh, Un for underrated, sure. Dude, for man. sure. I mean, everything this guy does. He's, he's unbelievable. He just he's unbelievable. kills it. Denzel he, is unbelievable. He is unbelievable. He is like yeah. one of the greatest you know, you know, you know you're You know you're the truth. Yeah. When rappers rap about you. Yeah. When they yeah. put you in verses. And Denzel is in many verses. Oh, man. That guy Big is... Sean says, I kill the scene like I'm Denzel. Yeah. Yeah. The guy, <laughs> like I'm on a limitless pill. This guy... <laughs> I mean, I want to look at... Hold on. Let's just go through his films real quick. Well, first because, of all, Glory. Of course. Which is crazy. Yeah. Malcolm yeah. X, no. which he should have got the Academy That's Award for. That's where he for. got robbed. That's exactly where he got robbed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, here we go. Because his evolution of a, a of a person in that movie, I mean, and Spike Lee should have been uh, should have won something for that as well. Spike Lee has been getting robbed since I've been watching this guy. He's, He's been getting robbed since he was a Knicks fan. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he gets robbed just for right. He gets robbed prices. eighty-two games a yeah, year. I absolutely think that Spike Lee. First of all, flight last year, or you know, a couple. Oh years ago, yeah, dude. That Come on, guy, dude. That guy murdered him. Oh, flight. yeah. Yeah. I mean, when he was on drugs with the hooker in the beginning, yeah. it was so real. I yeah. was like, well, this guy's definitely done drugs because right. no one could pull it off that good, man. Right. Okay, flight. All right. Uh, Let's see here. American Gangster. He was amazing. Oh, yeah. In that. I mean, come on. Amazing in that. Uh, Inside Man. Awesome. 
uh, Man on Fire. I mean, Manchurian Candidate. You know, uh, let's see here. Training day, man. I mean, well, come on. I mean, he, you know, yeah. he did win for that. I know. I'm just saying that the films he's done is. I think uh, it's funny that in tra- now they're doing a TV version of Training Day. Yeah. But they've decided to mix it up. Yeah, yeah. So well, now I, the I young talk- cock is black. Yep. And then the uh, older grizzled yeah, veteran Paxton who was Bill on Paxton, last week yeah yes yeah he is says, the guy he says it's uh it's cool man because it's uh it takes up like i think it's like 10 years later oh really yeah yeah and uh and he's talking about the Denzel character right. or you know and it's going to be Well i'll tell you this this was my only criticism of training day and yeah. it's just me just always wanting the most real version of something right I didn't want to see Denzel lose at the end of that movie. Right. You know what I mean? He was such a great, bad, dirty cop. Oh, he's so good. That I think in real life, those guys don't get taken down. Yeah. They continue to exist. Absolutely. And they run the show. And I think that's more of a powerful statement of that film if there is no redemption where he gets taken out. My my favorite still. But that's just me. That's me. That's just me. I still love it, man. He's like, you ever get wet? Yeah. <laughs> That's the best, yeah. man. Yeah. Oh no, he my. said, I didn't know you liked to get wet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And the guy's like, what? Yeah, oh. right. Right. Okay, look at this. Philadelphia. Yep. Pelican Brief. Right. Philadelphia, dude. Yeah, I mean, he killed come, it in Philadelphia. Come on, man. Uh, Malcolm X. Uh-huh. Uh, this is unbelievable. At Mo Better Blues. Oh, Mo Better Blues was Unbelievable. incredible. Yep. And Wesley was incredible in that. Yeah. Glory. In, glory, sure. Uh, oh, he killed it on St. Else, Elsewhere. <laughs> oh, of course. Of course. But anyway, it's unbelievable. Yeah, the, the body of that dude's work is, yeah, he's, he's, he's a national treasure. Every time. Can we just call him a national treasure? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. I mean, he's up there. He's up there. With you know the great, all the greats, all the greats, all the greats, man. Yep. It's it's insane, man. I'm looking forward to seeing the uh, documentary. Yeah, I think you're gonna like it, man. You, I think you'll really dig it. Yeah, and uh, and I just you know I'm I'm like I'm so obsessed with comedy. Yeah, you know, like yeah. you and I when we we live next door to each other, and it's it's funny. I like to talk to you because. Uh, there's a lot of guys in the biz that don't really want to talk comedy because they've been doing it all their life. Right. And I'm this new guy. Right. It's like when I talk with Burr, Burr loves to talk music with me. Right. Because he's playing drums and he's getting deeper and deeper into it. And right. And we, we do these gigs together and stuff and uh, to play music, you know, like when we did the birthday bash and stuff. Right. And... And it's so funny because he loves to talk music and I love to talk comedy. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, so we're trying to get in stuff on each right, other. Right, right. Yeah, but what about this? He's like, oh, yeah, you'll get that. Hey, yeah. <laughs> he goes, dude, you were just singing that like that. Oh, you know and I'm like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like nothing yeah, for me. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's so funny. You know? Yeah. So it's great to talk comedy with you and it's, gr- it's going to be great to do this weekend here at the store. Uh, two shows tonight, two tomorrow, and we'll really just... Uh, Hey, dude, it's a workshop. Come down there and get it. It's La Jolla. Yeah, man. It's so I mean, gr- I'm, glad days you, are, I'm glad you did it. Yeah, man. I, I'm glad that you asked me to do it. It's, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, like uh, the, it, it's a great chance for me to sort of just get back to the roots. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and just focus on being as funny as you can be. Well, that was my main thing about not want not to do the big birthday thing was, you know, that takes months of my brain space. Yeah. And and I really want to look at this year again. I, I said it before, but I last year I really was like going to concerts and living my life, and 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 uh, you know I need to get back into a hundred percent straight comedy like I did the first three four years, and uh, and really just this is you know like go to maybe a couple concerts this year. That's mm-hmm. about it. Mm-hmm. I've seen all the bands. Right. I'm good. Right. I need to get funnier, and I need to be on stage nonstop. It's right. the only way because I'm not a classic writer. Right. Uh, like uh, I think you sit down and write the stuff, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, my my process is, I really do like to think about what I want to say yeah. and and write it. Like you know, I mean, I was a monologue writer on the Tonight Show, exactly. so 
you know, you, you, you know, I like words and I like the, spe- you know, the, how specific words are. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I have opened up my process a little more where I'm trying to be more about what I feel about something and just be in the moment and yeah. give yourself leeway to play. But yeah, I, I do like writing stuff out. Right, right. I, I, I'm come to the, it's weird because when I do come up with a classic monologue style joke, it's almost by accident. I'm like, wow, that is a killer. Like, yeah. I don't know how I did that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm still in that phase of, of, of figuring out, how I made it funny. Right, you know right, right, I mean? right. I'm like, well, I wouldn't I wouldn't second guess that. No, like, I'm not. as long as you get there, yeah. that's the whole that's I'm all that matters. I'm not second guessing it at all because yeah. I'm just saying and that's all come from organic stage time. Right. Being on stage, trying stuff, taking chances and going for it and then going, "Holy shit, that worked and that didn't work at all." Right. You know, and Well, uh, I think every phase that you're in, you're focusing on something different. Yeah. You know, I was talking to uh, Dom Irera the other day and Dom and I have been friends for a a really long time and before he did stand up he was an English teacher so you know like words mean a lot to him and when he watches me on stage you know he goes sometimes I want you to just you know be goofy because you're you know like you're really funny when you're goofy and it balances you know this the specifics of your word choice right and so Sometimes I'll think about Dom when I go on stage, and it does make me get a little goofier. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, you know, it, it, you know, it, where you where your comedy comes from, you know, really determines, you know, your act. Yep. And as much as I like to think about jokes and write them, I do have to remember you're you're playing on stage. Yeah, you, you know what I mean? Perform. And, and yeah. perform and yeah. have fun, and it's okay to be loose and. You know, like you're always working on something. Yep, yep, yeah. I mean, I, I know. Like sometimes last year, I went on too angry. Yeah, and then I'm digging this hole. Like, whoa! I'm, I'm t- I remember one time Dice called me up in the middle of the night, and he's like, "Why so angry?" Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, he goes, yeah. "I like it, but I was wondering why are you so angry?" Right, you know? right. Was, it was amazing. Like. I'm not really angry. I just come up like, all right, let's do that. Yeah. yeah. And then someone starts fucking around over here with their phone, and then I just, ah, you know? Yeah, I mean? right, right, right. <laughs> Which is true, because I know if I smile a little, the, the set goes a lot better. Right. And I'll probably enjoy it myself more, you know what right. I mean? But I am up there venting and getting shit out and rocking. Yeah, you know? sure. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. what it is, dude. Yeah. All and right. everybody has a rhythm, you know? Yeah, hell yeah. So it comes out on the 24th? Dying Laughing comes out February 24th. Badass. Uh, in select theaters and on iTunes Video On Demand. Yep. Uh, iTunes Movies. Um, it's got, you know, all your favorite comics in it. And I think it's a really cool timestamp on what the state of comedy is right now. Can't wait to see it, man. And uh, come see us tonight, two shows, and tomorrow at the La Jolla Comedy Store. And if you can't make that... I will be with Bill Burr at the Irvine, or sorry, the San Jose Improv, March 20, 21, and 22, uh, six shows. And then I'm headlining Irvine Improv March 9th, and also Denver one night. It's coming up, Sioux Teatro Theater. Uh oh! Uh, yeah, the eight, what? Yeah, the eighteenth. I'm doing a one nighter there. There you the go. Theater, go get and it. I want to pack that sucker out. Pack it out. Uh, come see me there. Got tickets and all the info on the Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. And uh, what else? I guess that's about. Oh, I got a big show coming up. I can't tell you about till I think next week. Is that confidential? Yeah, you're gonna. <laughs> I, told, I think I, oh, I, I told. Need to know basis. It's gonna be great, but let's just say it's out in uh, Columbus. I think out mm. there somewhere, mm. and uh, it's gonna be uh, good in May. I'll tell you about that next week. And what else? Uh, Monday. Another episode of Let There Be Talk. Thanks for tuning in today to Bitchin' with Suli and myself, live from La Jolla Comedy Store. Love you guys. Keep the candles lit. Oh, one last thing. I got a great donation. I like to give the shout-outs to the guys that donate to the podcast, and I did get a donate 
I donate. I, I did get a donate today. <laughs> you, you, ever be you got a donut do- donate? You ever eat donates? <laughs> <laughs> Them wanna, donates is delicious. Yeah, I want to give the guy a shout out because uh, it's so cool. The guy, I believed he lived in... Uh, in Australia or somewhere. I'm getting crazy listeners. For, I had a guy come out from Norway and come see me at the comedy store. And it was just incredible. I gave him a full tour of the place and we had fun. He saw a set and I thank God I had a great set. You know, uh, let's see here. Mitchell McNaughton. McNaughton, Mitchell McNaughton. Thank- Mitchell McNaughton. Yeah, and then, of course, Mark Blazik last week donated. Awesome. And Michael Street, all great. Thank you for your donations. And I do want to give a little shout-out to my boy who, uh, shit, I was going to find it here, from Norway. The guy's like the host of like the America's Got Talent kind of. Uh, In Norway. Yeah. So Norway's Got Talent. Yeah, man, and he sent me a clip, and it was really cool. He's the host. It's funny to see him, because when he's at the store, he's all leathered up. Right, 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 right. right. And on there, he looked like a totally different guy. He's playing drums, great drummer. I hope I can find his his, his thing here. Oh, here it is. Uh, Tarjay, T-A-R-J-E-I. I I forget how to say his name, because he had an accent. Strom. Tarjay Strom, thank you for coming out, dude. Love you. Thanks, all everybody, for tuning in. And follow Suli on Instagram. That's right. It's Suli McCullough, S-U-L-I-M-C-C-U-L-L-O-U-G-H. And same with Twitter. And same with Twitter. Suli McCullough at Twitter. Yep, yep. <laughs> S- send him pictures of your sneakers. He's a sneakerhead. Yeah, head. I am a sneakerhead. Candles lit. All right, let's go to the record store and see what they got. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, boy. All right. 